All right, and our Sunrise Smart Start happening today. All four teens charged in a sex abuse case at Clyde Savannah High School will be appearing in court. Police tell us a 14-year-old boy was assaulted in the boys' locker room on Halloween, and a 15-year-old, two 16-year-olds, and a 17-year-old have all been charged. Three of those teens face sexual abuse charges, while that fourth is charged with unlawful surveillance. The DA's office says that final teen's case has been moved to family court because he was 15 at the time of the crime. A man has been sentenced after being found guilty of sexually assaulting a child. 54-year-old James Orr sexually abused an 11-year-old girl in January of 2022. According to the Monroe County District Attorney's Office or was listed on the sex abuse registry and was on parole at the time of his crime. A 23 year old shot and killed in Rochester has been identified as police tell us Zahir Roberts was found shot on Glenwood Avenue just before 1 a.m. Saturday morning. He died at the hospital and there are currently no suspects in custody. Call if you know anything though. Call 911. A Pittsburgh man, one of eight Air Force crew members killed in last week's Osprey aircraft crash in Japan. That aircraft goes Going into the sea last Wednesday off the shore of Yakushima. Well, now we officially know that 32 year old Terrell Brayman of Pittsburgh is one of those who died in the crash. Officials say that the Air Force, uh, with the Air Force rather, says that the Osprey was performing a routine training mission when it went down. So far, the bodies of six crew members have officially been recovered. We just got that latest update, and two airmen have yet to be located. All right, it's time to uh, check in with James and our weather. We want folks to be very, very careful as they get out the door this morning yeah. at 6.50. Yeah, that's right. And uh, it's uh, tough because there are some areas that aren't seeing any snow at all, mm -hmm. and there are some pockets where we're getting some moderate to heavy snow. So you may drive into that. This is a view outside of our News 8 studios there. There's some snow that is flying, and uh, it looks real light here, but uh, you can see that it's covering the roads, starting to cover the roads, something that it really didn't do all night because of the temperature. Yeah, a bit early for the snow plows to be out, so uh, you got to take extra precaution, especially on those side streets. Mm -hmm, yes, probably spitting out a little bit of salt uh, to try to uh, help melt some of that snow that is starting to build up. You can see it there on satellite and radar. The flakes are flying through Rondequoit, Webster getting a little bit of a burst of snow. Uh, looks like Parenton uh, down in the Fairport as well. Hilton at 32, Batavia at 30, Honey Eye Falls sitting at 29, Rush at 31. Temperatures don't move much from where they are now. We'll hold in the lower 30s uh, and then drop even tonight. Another round of snow early tomorrow. We'll talk about that and a peak toward the weekend. Your eight-day forecast coming up at the end of the show. Michaela. All right, thank you so much, James. We will keep an eye on that uh, here at 652 as these roads, look at them right there, really starting to pick up. We've got some accidents picking up as well. One with possible injuries just reported at 490 East between Penfield Road, that is exit 22 and exit 23, which is for Linden Avenue. We also have one uh, down southeast, an accident at 90 West between exit 44, which is for route 332 and exit 45. We have another accident also on 490. Uh, we're kind of keeping an eye on that one. So that's causing uh, quite a bit of a slowdown. 590, excuse me, 590 North at 490, which is exit five. So be very, very careful as we see those flakes flying this morning, everybody. A development in Gates that's been vacant for years, as you could now see, seen a new lease on life at the Brooks Avenue Hotel in Gates. It's near the airport and it's been slated for redevelopment. In January, the Gates Town Board approved to restore the New York grant to demolish this building, build a new hotel in its place. The town also receiving $2 million for that project in May. The Gates Town Supervisor now says they're hoping to include a gas station and a restaurant as part of this redevelopment. New York lawmakers will consider a new bill next session this coming January, trying to decide whether or not to support elder parole. It's already causing controversy among local representatives and incarcerated persons advocates. Iran Spitzer is in our studio breaking it down live. Iran. Yes, if the bill is passed, it would allow incarcerated people at 55 who've served at least 15 years behind bars to qualify for a parole hearing regardless of the crime. Republican State Senator Pam Helming is against the bill and says that while the legislation has just enough support to pass, she doesn't understand why her Democratic colleagues would sign a bill like this instead of something that supports the victims. It's not a good thing for society, for our communities. What I'm hearing from people in Monroe County and throughout my entire district, they want increased public safety and security. 
They don't want more criminals who committed these heinous crimes released onto the streets. The community organizer for the Center for Community Alternatives disagrees, saying he doesn't believe that if a person makes a bad decision, that they should be held accountable for the rest of their lives. It's just overkill if we continue to keep people in prison. Most people in prison after they, they, they've spent decades in prison, now you're talking about health issues, you're talking about all these other different things that the state had to provide, which costs more money which ultimately is going to cost taxpayers more money. Now, to be clear, this bill does not call for granting parole, rather giving a person increased opportunity to sit before the parole board. Michaela, back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Iran. And also, remember that our Food for Families fundraiser, that's still in full swing. If you are interested in helping out, we've got those little brown bags of hope at every Topps supermarket available for donation in $5, 10 and $20 increments. You can also drop off food in person this Friday as part of our day-long push at the Topps on Mount Reed Boulevard in Greece, further competing with WCMF to try and see who can raise more money. For food link, TV, or radio, you can scan this QR code on your screen right now to donate your money to food link and select which team to support whoever you choose. Obviously, it goes to a great cause, but uh, we want you to pick yeah. us. Yes, uh, certainly. Uh, yeah, open up your phone and open up the camera uh, to scan that QR code. Uh, fun event there. Our big day is Friday for the Food for Families, and Friday, as of right now, looks like a nice day. A much nicer day than we're having already here yeah. with the snow finally hitting and sticking to the ground. That's what we've got this morning, yes. Could be a slick commute for a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, not going to be a significant impact, uh, but there are some pockets around Monroe County that are catching on a quick uh, half inch to an inch. We've got another round tomorrow as well. That'll push this just into the minor to moderate category uh, for snowfall total. So just remember that not only is this morning's commute a little bit slick, but tomorrow's will be as well with overnight lows in the 20s. But the warm up is coming. Uh, we get near 40 Thursday afternoon with a chance for a little bit of rain snow, but that's really early in the day. Friday, partly to mostly cloudy, near 50, and then surging into the 50s. Saturday should be great. The rain likely holds off until Saturday night, overnight, and then into Sunday. And boy, that's a big storm system that we've got. But we'll talk about that later. Focus yeah, on this morning. Yeah, we'll try to make it through today and the rest of our week. Thank you so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Glad to have you with us. Your next update is in 30 minutes, and CBS Mornings is next. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.